Hello folks, I hope you're all keeping well. Today's video I want to talk to you about some female health issues so if that's something you're not interested in it might not be the video for you. However, I want to talk to you about my experience with getting the IUD, which is it's known as more so in the States, or getting the coil or getting the specifically getting the marina coil. Um, the procedure, the aftercare, and how I have found the effects of having the marina coil. So I really hope that if you are planning on getting the coil, if it's a, a an option that you are considering for, be it contraceptive purposes or like I was for endometriosis or very heavy periods, that this video will help you. And I really hope this will give you a little bit more information than what you already know, because I know that I've taken so much from my experience um, that I didn't know before. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that I didn't realize before, um, or a lot of things people said to me that I didn't really take a lot of stock in. Let's start from the beginning. Um, if you have watched my endometriosis video, you'll have a good idea of my situation with female health, with my, my women's health. But really quick, brief update for those of you that haven't watched that video. I have suffered with endometriosis. I had a laparoscopy and a cyst removed off one of my ovaries back a couple of years ago. I've always had really heavy periods. I've been anemic. I have always just have had heavy, prolonged periods every like 19 days. So my quality of life, especially over the last 10 years, has been dwindling. That's a bit of the background. <laughs> I have been working with my gynecologist for about three years now to try and alleviate some of my endometriosis symptoms and to figure out just a solution for me going forward to improve my quality of life. So a bit of extra information is that I had a clot, uh, a DVT, so deep vein thrombosis in one of my calves back about 10 years ago um, so for that reason I can't be put on regular hormonal therapies like the pill or the patch or the injection or things like that however my gynecologist decided that the marina coil was probably a better option for me um, not necessarily for contraceptive purposes but definitely to help reduce my bleeding, reduce any of my symptoms, my PMS symptoms, all of those lovely things that as women we experience on a monthly basis and more often than not don't talk enough about them. So like I said, I had gone to my gynecologist. I had had the endometriosis diagnosed back a few years ago. I went back to him last year and I was like, hey, things are just getting worse. Can we please come up with a solution? I was so desperate. I was kind of like, hey, you know, if you had to do a hysterectomy, that would be okay. And he was like, whoa. But that's the level I was at. I was like, I cannot deal with this. Like my friends are going out and they're like, even my friends who have had kids, like they don't have periods like I have them and I haven't even had a child. So, you know, this is ridiculous. Why am I living like this? This is so annoying. And I really thought that having a hysterectomy was the only thing that was going to save me. And at that stage I was like 34 and he was like, you're way too young for that. That's way too permanent. Let's try the option of an interuterine device, an IUD or a coil. And in my case, the marina coil. Let's try a coil option before we go down that road. So that was fine. That was decided that we were going to have the coil. So what he also wanted to do was just check that the lining of my womb was okay. So to do that, he did a hysteroscopy and a DNC. So if you don't know what those terms are, a DNC is a dilation and curettage, I think it's how you pronounce it. And basically someone who has had a miscarriage or who maybe has had an abortion would have a DNC in order to just remove any excess tissue within their womb and just basically remove. It's, a, it's like, you know, scraping the insides of your womb and just getting rid of everything and starting from scratch. If you, if you want to put it that way. Um, the other thing then is a hysteroscopy, which is basically a scope that goes inside your uterus and has a little look around the lining of your womb. So I had a hysteroscopy and a DNC back, like I say, 16 weeks ago, and they cleaned everything out and they had a little look around the lining of my womb. Thankfully, everything is perfect, which when you hear that from a doctor, everything is perfect. Like there's nothing, that's, that's amazing. I didn't ever think there was anything sinister anyway, but just to hear those words, like, had the DNC, had the hysteroscopy, and while he was doing that, he inserted the marina coil. So a lot of people can have the coil inserted at their GP surgery, and you don't have to be knocked out to have that procedure done. You can get it done as you are awake, and it's fine. They need to give you some medication beforehand, obviously, because it is painful. I've not experienced it like that, so I can't comment on it, but I do know that it is extremely uncomfortable and, and painful at times too. So I went in to a day ward 
in my hospital that I go to where my gynecologist is and I had these procedures. Um, I was knocked out obviously, you have to be under anaesthetic to have a DNC and to have a hysteroscopy. Um, so I went in at 8 a.m. I think I, I think my procedure was at nine and then they kept me until one. And my mom picked me up and I went home um, to rest. So it was that quick and of course, as always, like nurses are incredible. So I was really, really well looked after in the hospital I went to and I was delighted to have had the procedure done and dusted and over with. Like my expectations and my hopes for the coil were that they were just going to maybe lighten my periods. I was like, oh, that'd be lovely if I just had a normal period. So that's what I kind of hoped for the coil. It was just to reduce my bleeding and just reduce the, the like the pain and the just hassle around the time of my period as well like really bad pms really bad headaches exhaustion all of that kind of thing and i just thought if i had a lighter period all of that would just be a lot easier to deal with so that was fine came home to my mom and dad's and then for the next couple of weeks i was tender and i had like cramping so it was almost like i always i had a period like all the time then now this is the part that i want you to listen to because i didn't listen to this so a nurse in my gp surgery said Amy, you need to give the coil six months to settle. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, no problem, that's fine. And she's like, you do, you need to persevere with it for six months. And I, I was like, yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And I did disregard her a little bit, sorry, Catherine. <laughs> I did kind of disregard her, uh, but she was so right. I'm four months post coil insertion, let's say, and um, I can attest to the fact that she was 100% right. So what I need you to know, um, and if you're planning on getting the coil, I really need you to know this, is that I basically had a period for seven weeks, seven weeks after having the coil. And I mean continuously for seven weeks. So that was not pleasant. Obviously, after three weeks, I was like, this is ridiculous, this cannot be a thing. After uh, four weeks, after five weeks, so I remember ringing my doctor, because I was like, this, something has gone wrong, This has it come out, has something happened? Because that also happens. Sometimes your body's just like, nah, we don't want this, and it just gets rid of it by itself, which has happened to people that I know as well. Um, so I rang the doctor and I was like, this is not right, and I spoke to my nurse and she was like, this is the thing, you just need to stick with it. She said, just stick with it. Um, you know, if after 12 weeks, you're still in so much pain, we can give you something to help stop the bleeding. But personally, I just did not want to put more stuff into my body. I had had an anesthetic. That's a lot of heavy drugs, not heavy legal drugs, obviously, but that's a lot on your system. So I didn't really want to put more stuff into my body to stop me from bleeding. I was like, oh, just let it all happen, whatever. But anyway, after seven weeks, it eventually stopped. Um, so that was, that was mid-December. Um, I think the last time I had a period was the 8th of December. And I kid you not, we're coming towards the end of February. I have not had a period since. It's amazing! <laughs> it is amazing. So look, I suppose I'm still conscious that I'm inside the six month window. Um, and before anyone asks, I'm not pregnant just in case people are like looking at this going hmm. 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 I'm not pregnant that's not a thing um but yeah so I've, I've I've been this length of time the longest since I've been 10 years old the longest that I've gone without a period so this can happen this isn't unusual this can happen for some people when they get the coil it's either they it lightens your periods which is what I was hoping for or your period can disappear um, and that for me was going to be like best case scenario. So like best case scenario. I was so happy. So I am actually so happy. It's fantastic. I cannot praise it enough. Again, I know I'm not outside the six month window, but I'm at four months. So I think I'm, I'm fairly okay. I don't have as many headaches. I don't have as many migraines. I don't have PMS anymore. I don't have that. I used to get it and if you, like I say, if you watch my endometriosis video, you'll hear me say this. I used to get like exhausted the week before my period. So much so that I just like almost cry. I would be so tired. Um, I don't get that anymore. I just have energy all the time and I haven't had my bloods checked, but I'm gonna guess that I'm not anemic anymore, which I have been for a while. Uh, so yeah, like I've just found it's been absolutely amazing. 
So a little bit of, uh, not necessarily a disclaimer because I've already told you all of this information, but this does not work the same for everyone by any means. I put this on my Instagram, I was like, I got the coil and you know, I don't think it's working. Has anyone else had any dealings with it, any experiences they want to share? And so many people came back to me to say, stick with it, stick with it, best thing I ever did. Oh my God, amazing, you're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. And I was there like in bits, like such bad pains and cramps and constantly bleeding and whatever. And I was like, I just don't get this, but they were right. They were so totally right. Other people have said, oh my God, it, it affected my mental health so badly. I had to get it taken out after a couple of weeks because I started suffering with depression when I never suffered with it before. Um, so there's lots of ways that it affects people. At the end of the day, it is still hormones going into your system and it's there for five years and it's really effective for contraception and it's also effective, as I can attest to now, uh, for endometriosis and for heavy periods and things like that too. So I don't know, I feel like I've kind of hopped all around this video talking about different things, but I didn't really structure it that well because I just wanted to kind of tell the story of it and go through it systematically and just give you my honest opinion. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. I've, I've never known my life like this. I don't want to go into TMI, but if you're someone who has like um, really heavy periods that like you, you get like huge clots, you get constantly leaking, constantly worrying about like, I like when I was when we were in the office and we were going to work for the last I don't know many years I would be so um paranoid about like sitting down on things like sitting on anything white um and it's not because I don't know how to protect myself it's very much because and if you have heavy periods you might be able to uh, relate to this is that sometimes you can just stand up and get a gush and you're like you know you're kind of like and then you should just be like you know if you're in a meeting or if you're talking to a colleague, you're like, ah, and you're not listening to what they're saying because you're just like, I just need to get to a toilet. Oh my God, ah. And you have to deal with it like that. And that's a really just not a nice scenario um, to be in. So that has cured all of this for me. Right now, today, um, I, every now and again, it's kind of really funny because every now and again, I will get a cramp, like a uterus cramp, because I mean, if you're a girl, you know what a uterus cramp feels like, as opposed to like a cramp in your stomach, like from your digestion. There's a huge difference between them. But every now and again, I will get a cramp that sticks me to the ground. That I'm literally like, say for instance, in the middle of talking to Mike, and then I go. <sighs> and then I'm like, anyway, yeah, so we were saying. <laughs> so that does kind of happen every now and again. And I don't know if that's still like the settling in period or if that's just gonna happen. But I mean, I will take a random breathtaking stick me to the floor cramp every couple of weeks over five days of bleeding, three days of cramps, and a day of really not being able to do a whole pile or two days of not being able to do a whole pile or string a sentence together or things like that too. So that's kind of my, yeah, like I'm happy to, to take that. That's not a problem for me. Like I always say with everything, if you feel like your menstrual cycle or anything to do with women's health or your any, any element of your health is not normal or is different to how it has been in the past for you, then you definitely just need to speak to your GP and don't shy away because we are in a pandemic. Don't shy away from going to your GP, get your bloods checked. That was how I was kind of initially how the flag was raised for me with my endometriosis was that I didn't really bother telling the doctor because I was like, mm, I mean, this is a period. I don't know what's right, what's wrong, what's you know heavy, what's not heavy. But I was always low in iron and I was always like anemic and my doctor was like, what is the story? And that's when I actually started the conversation with him about, well, actually, yeah, my periods are really heavy. Um, so please do that. Go to your doctor, get checked out keep on top of your health because nobody else can do it only you realistically nobody else can look after you like you look after yourself like i say it's a little bit of a different kind of thing but i wanted to give you an update and give you some information and i hope it helped somebody so yeah that is it thanks a million for watching and of course i will talk to you in my next video bye